you know, it's always been a desire of mine to want to learn how to play an instrument. As a matter of fact, many years ago, I tried to learn how to play guitar, um, but it didn't go very far because I, I wasn't as committed as I wanted to be. My mind had this idea that I would love to do something like this, but being able to do something like that and to do it well takes a lot of time. My son, on the other hand, is a very accomplished pianist. And the reason why he's an accomplished pianist is because he has taken the time to learn how to play piano over many years' period of time. And while many people uh, admire the way that he plays today and might wish to want to learn how to play how he does, when he started, he didn't sound that good. As a matter of fact, he sounded bad. And it's really an, uh, an understanding for all of us to realize that if we want to learn how to be good at something, we have to be willing to be bad at something first. And that's really where we're at today. As we're continuing our study in the book of Romans, we're going to be looking at a discipline that you and I are called to be good at, but must first be willing to be bad at before we can become good at it. We'll talk about that as we continue our study together today. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us. By clicking the subscribe button and the bell for notifications, you can receive a devotional much like this one, where we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to help be more like Jesus. Well, as we continue our study through the book of Romans, uh, Paul continues on his desire to see the people of Israel saved. Uh, and, but in order for them to be saved, something has to happen. He talks about that through chapter 10 today, and we're going to discuss it a little bit more and how it impacts us as well. Brothers, my de heart's desire and prayer to God for them, the people of Israel, is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says... Do not say in your heart, who will ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. But I asked, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation, nation I will make you angry. And then Isaiah is so bold to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have held my hands to a held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. And so we see in this passage of scripture the longing, the continued longing of Paul for the people of Israel to come to know Jesus because they've rejected God's righteousness that comes through Christ, who is the end of the law. And so what we see is he says, now, how are these people going to hear? 
The only way that they're going to hear is if somebody reaches to them, if somebody is sent to them. And that's what you and I have. You and I have a commission from God. You know, Matthew chapter 28, verses uh, 18 through 20, when Jesus is uh, leaving, he leaves this great commission. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always, even to the very end of the age. So this is what Jesus tells us to do, that we're supposed to go out and preach the good news of Jesus Christ, make disciples of other people. But the only way that we're going to be able to make disciples is if we're telling them. And this is what Paul says, you know, how can they hear unless somebody goes? And in order for us to be good at sharing our faith, we have to first be willing to be bad at sharing our faith. You know, I, I understand a lot of people have fear and trepidation when it comes to sharing their faith in Jesus Christ. And the first time you do it, you may not do it the best way possible. But I would rather a person who is willing to learn to get better at it by continuing to do it than waiting to be perfect at it before doing it once. You get the understanding, the difference between the two? Because even if you're perfect at it, there are going to be people who reject you, who don't who don't share uh, the conviction of Jesus Christ, who will not believe no matter how well you present the material. It doesn't have as much to do with your presentation as it does your faithfulness. And you'll get better at sharing Christ the more you do it. In other words, we have to be bad at sharing Christ first before we get good at sharing Jesus to the world around us. And this is why, you know, the the preciousness of the feet of the people who bring good news, because they're willing to go out and be bad at something until they're good at something. My son is was bad at playing piano. You're going to have to trust me because all you hear is the greatness of how he does now. But he was bad at, at the very beginning. And it was not an easy thing for him to learn. It took years and years and years for him to practice to perfect those things. In the same way, for you and me to get better and better about sharing our faith in Jesus Christ, it takes you and me being willing to step out in faith and share it once, even if we don't do the best of jobs. And so my encouragement to you is to take very seriously the commission that God has given to us, which is to go out and to share the good news to people who haven't heard. And you might be bad at it at first, and it's okay. But guess what? The more you do it, the easier it will be. And the easier it is, the more you're going to do it. That's that's the beauty of it. My son plays music all the time now because he kept doing it over and over and over again when he was bad. So now he's really good at it. So let's get bad at sharing our faith so we can get good at sharing our faith. I hope that encourages you today uh, to live for him and maybe to test out your, your bad sharing of your faith to your friends and your coworkers and the people you're going to meet this day. That's the only way you and I are going to get better at it. God bless you. We will talk with you again tomorrow.